doing? What am I doing? This is an earthquake generator. Look what's happening. There's movement. That's right, there's movement. And, oh. It fell. It fell. So you know something? Earthquakes occur almost every day. All over the place. All over the world. And they occur only uh, on the surface of the Earth. Now you're going to tell us about the Earth. Now a lot of people think the Earth is perfectly round with a metal uh, strap around it and so on and so forth. The Earth is not perfectly round at all. Tell us about the Earth, Mr. Okay. Maxwell. So, in my horribly drawn model of the Earth, okay, we have three very distinct layers. Okay, with the third layer actually being broken into two parts. Okay. The outer layer is the crust. Okay. The crust is extremely thin in comparison to the rest of the planet. Think of a slice of bread, the outer crust. Okay, very thin layer. Skin of an apple, very thin layer. Okay. That's comparable to what the crust thickness is compared to the rest of the planet. So the crust is approximately 5 to 70 kilometers thick, okay, depending on where uh, on the planet you are. Now, it completely encompasses the, the planet, okay, whether it is on um, ground like under mountains or if it's below the sea on the ocean floor. All of that is the crust of the planet. And there's two types of rocks that the uh, crust is made up of. If it's on the continents, like, for example, the North America, South America, below those continents, that rock is granite. Okay? Please excuse the interruption. Attention all cluster leaders for the PBIS Rewards Celebration. If you know of any teachers taking students outside or if there's food involved, you need to let Nurse Donna know where they're going to be at this time. Please get a hold of Nurse Donna at this time. Once again, cluster leaders, please get a hold of Nurse Donna and let them know what teachers and students will be outside and if there will be any food served. Thank you very much. Gee whiz. Thank you, Mr. Muharram. So, as I was saying, if it's the continent, okay, that rock is made of granite. If it is on the ocean floor, the seabeds, that rock is basalt, okay? Both of them are igneous rocks made of essentially molten lava that has cooled and hardened over time. The biggest thing you need to know about the granite and basalt is that basalt is much more dense than granite is. Okay, when we talk about the next unit, which is plate tectonics, we'll get into the significance of that. Okay, but for now, just know the crust is only 5 to 70 kilometers thick and that it's composed of granite and basalt. The next layer is the mantle. It's 2,867 kilometers thick. Okay, well, I would say approximately, but it's pretty, they have a pretty good um, indication of just how thick it really is. Now, again, that can vary a little bit depending on where on the planet you are. Now, this is a semi-solid rock. It's like molten rock material. So when you think of lava, that's what the mantle is composed of. Okay, now, as you get closer to the crust, some of that mantle is a little has hardened, okay, so it's actually could be some more solid rock than beneath that. But it's a semi-solid molten rock material. The most predominant element that is found in the mantle is magnesium. And that's why actually why they call it the mantle. It's made of probably magnesium. The crust is um, primarily like aluminum and other metals that we know of because we use them on a regular basis. Okay. In the mantle, that rock is constantly moving because it's semi-solid. And we get something called convection currents where the rock will literally uh, move towards the crust because it's heated by the core, moves towards the crust. As it cools, it will sink. So you get this movement. And we're going to be talking about that in the next couple weeks, the significance of that movement. Beneath the mantle, we have what's called the core. Okay, it's a very hot area. We have two cores. We have an outer core, which is about 2,266 kilometers thick, and we have an inner core, about 1,200 kilometers thick. Okay, so the inner core is significantly smaller in uh, thickness. The significance between the two 
and that the outer core is actually liquid because of the extreme temperatures that it's under. The inner core, however, should be a liquid at such high temperatures. However, it's actually a very dense, solid metal because of the pressure of the weight, essentially weight of the world, pushing down on it from all sides. Now our cores, the inner core and outer core, are predominantly iron and nickel. That's why we actually have a magnetic field because of the our metallic core. Okay, that's why we have like, our North Pole and South Pole is because of our metallic core. So again, the solid, dense inner core made of predominantly iron and nickel. The outer core, extremely high temperatures, just like the inner core, but this is a liquid. The mantle, which is a semi-solid rock, that molten rock material, um, think lava, but it's really at that point, it's magma, what's beneath the Earth's surface. And the solid rock crust, that is the top layer of the Earth. Those are the three main layers of the Earth you have to know. And you need to know that we have actually two parts of the core, the liquid outer core and the dense solid inner core.